And it is a football Monday, but with tradition, Big Sills. Oh, and by the way, I want to do a PSA. Some of you may not know what this is. It's a public service announcement. All Philadelphia Eagle cheerleading tryouts can be submitted with a video, and I think it's by March 23rd on the website. So if you're looking to submit your cheerleading video to become a cheerleader, you have to do it by March 23rd. Or you're not going to be able to, like, you know, get your application in for you to become a Philadelphia Eagle pom-pom waver and, without a doubt, one of the great, great cheerleaders of all time. How do you know? If you don't submit it, hey, man, it's a public service announcement for all Eagle cheerleaders. Get that video in. By the 23rd, get that video in. There, it's just a couple days away, man. I mean, holy cow. You know, we got a certain guy on our network that's really great at videos. Got to get that in by the 23rd. That's all I'm saying here. That's how we start. Auditions, too, after, by the way. It's a pretty difficult process to make the Philadelphia Eagle cheerleaders. Okay. Remember that when you're a cheerleader, it's a 24 seven thing, man. That's a big deal to be called like a Howard Eskin. They're called the Eskins. Do you know that they're called the Eskins? The Philadelphia cheerleaders are called the Eskins. This is a big deal. This is one of Philadelphia's great honors to be called an Eskin. Okay, this is enormous. What's this say here? Um, Colangelo doesn't like your hurt tape, Big Sills. Well, he ain't gonna like this show then. <laughs> uh, okay, Sills about the oh, I'm saying hey, oh, get that, get that video in. With all the bells and whistles, Sir James and Xander and all the young pups know how to do all that shit. Me and Angelo are just old school dudes, you know? We look at what shit is, you know? We don't drive around in yachts and BMWs and flex in front of the mirror all day and eat goat balls and whatever the healthy things kids eat today. We're just old school dudes, you know? That's all I'm saying to you. <laughs> This has been one of the funnest times I've ever seen when it comes to covering a football team. Yeah, rah, rah, man. Maybe that's how I should start my show off. Rah, rah, and go Eagles. How you doing? Rah, rah. <laughs> how he signing some dogs. How he is signing dogs. Dead dogs. Like when you throw the Greyhounds in the ditch. Holy shit. When's he going to address his defense? <laughs> hey, Chris goes, wait a minute, Sills. You drive. Hey, Hollywood Sills, you drive a Hummer. I owned a bitch. I've owned it for a couple of years now. Give me a break. What's wrong with a Hummer? Don't everybody, and doesn't everybody like a Hummer? <laughs> Mine's yellow. I like a Hummer. <laughs> Who in the right man card mind would not like a Hummer? <laughs> okay. M. Reyes says, worst ride. No, not the worst ride. You mean gas mileage. So is you saying the Cowboys win in the East? I don't know, man. Maybe Washington might win the East. Siri Liar stay in the Eagles makes a deep playoff run. <laughs> yeah, let me get into the topics. So how about there's some conversation out there right now that Justin Fields and the Eagles were talking about potentially coming to Philadelphia. And, of course, the Philadelphia media is going to spin it, where it was said that 
He didn't come to Philadelphia because he'd be a backup. Well, wait a minute. You could have benched Jalen Hurts at any time last year in that eight-game stretch where they were one and seven, and he sucked out loud. You could have benched him at any time. He stunk. Don't you understand? This guy was second in turnovers in the league. You keep telling me how good he was. How come he couldn't stop the slide? Good quarterbacks do that. Good players find a way. Not him. And then he gets blown out and destroyed by the Bucs. Everyone's making an excuse because it's March 18th, but when he was in the middle of it, you knew he was blowing out loud. Now you're going to sit here and give the boy wonder or slash one-year wonder all of his flowers because he was good two years ago. This is a league on what you've done for me lately, guy. You guys like celebrating Brandy Graham, don't you? Because of what he did. I'm talking about Brandon Graham, what he brings now. Nothing. You're celebrating and you love a player like Brandon Graham and Jason Kelsey. You know why Jason Kelsey should be still on the Eagles? Because he offers something. Graham offers nothing. Leadership and, you know, talking to the fellas. That didn't matter last year when you were melting down at one and seven. Those are the facts, friends. You know, people keep projecting, Hurts is going to have a turnaround year. I don't talk like that. Who are you now? As far as I'm concerned, you've had one season. You are right now in the in the world of you could be considered a one-year wonder if you flop again. Do I think you'll flop again? I don't know. Not a fortune teller. I'm not a fortune teller. But yet you want to sit here and project, well, he's, he, he's he's gonna look good this year. Nine turnovers. No, no, I don't know that. I know what he is right now. This is what he's done. This is who you are, and that projecting—that's the shit that's gotten the Eagles in fault and problems before when they're projecting instead of paying for reality. T.J. Watt was a good player. Pay him. No, we could probably get somebody better. That's projecting. Wrong. You failed. You couldn't even replace Kaiser White. And you're trying to tell, that's projecting. I project that Nicobe Dean, there will be no fall off from him to TJ Edwards. There was a massive fall off. Facts. Fact. Get this. This is nothing about being a swami. This is nothing about prediction. This is what you did. You talk in theories. I talk in actualities. This is what you have done. This is who you are. Well, Seals, can you project? No. Nobody's a fortune teller. Why don't you take a look at that 2021 draft and ask yourself. Here, here's, here's a great spin. Take a look at this. Okay. How many people think that this kid, Caleb Williams, um, is the first pick in the draft? I'll make this point to you. Did you think Caleb Williams had a better college career than Bryce Young? I don't. You think Bryce Young looked better at Alabama than Caleb looked at SC? I do. I do. Are you going to try to tell me that you're going to project that Caleb Williams has more to offer than what Bryce Young did? He didn't have a better career. He wasn't hyped as much. How can a guy make the playoffs three years in a row in his third year as a playoff starter and be a one-year wonder? Um, You mean like Dak? I'm like, you know, I saw Mark Sanchez make the playoffs in his first three years. I saw Mark Sanchez get to a couple AFC championship games. I wouldn't hang my hat on that. Mark Sanchez, I believe, his first three years, he went to the playoffs. Right? I mean, okay, I I, I don't think Hurts is trash. Again, once again, I've been consistent. Not a guy I build my team around. I have to have too much around to do. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. 
So you guys project that this guy's going to turn it around. I'm going to tell you who he is right now. Let's do this. Okay. Um, you think the reasons that the Eagles pulled back because Howie was afraid Justin Fields would look better than Hurts does in this talented offensive huddle? And you think that's why they pulled the deal back? That he might look better. How, how can you say no? Here, here, let's do this. Don't you think, like who, how many people think that um, Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy has done more in 21 starts than Hurts has done in his three years already. Okay? You're the same guy. Do I think he's a superstar quarterback? Not really. Because he's got a shitload of talent around him. There's nothing different from him and Hurts. So the Eagles have Brock Purdy. Has Sanchez ever gotten an MVP vote or named an all-pro team? I take Jerome Brown and Dan Silly over anybody. Thank you. Thank you. No, but um, Brock Purdy has. Shit, Brock Purdy, man, in his first two years. Look at that playoff record, even. What Jalen Hurts is Brock Purdy. There's no difference. Star receivers, star tight end, star back, better O-line in Philly. Am I wrong? What has Jalen Hurts done more than that guy? How do you know he's not Brock Purdy? Actually, Brock Purdy hasn't played awful yet. Your guy has. Okay? Your guy has. He has. Runner-up MVP. Super Bowl. All the talent throws the ball superior to Jalen. Both teams are the same, Flexen. How do you know that Philadelphia's got Brock Purdy? Just in a different version. An RPO type guy. Same guy. So when you look at Brock Purdy, do you go, that guy is a guy that could carry a football team to a, to a Super Bowl win? Well, if you say that about him, you're saying that about Hurts then too, right? Because Purdy and him are the same because they have the same talent. I'd say the 49ers even have a better defense, and that leans more to the point that Jalen couldn't stop the mess last year because of the shitty defense. They kind of are the same dude. Oh, you get this. Nobody in here is going to admit this, that you have Brock Purdy in Philly. Well, I'm going to show you you do. I'm going to show you you do. Let's take a look at this. How many pro bowlers did Jalen Hurts play with this past season? Six? Five? There's not one in Chicago. There wasn't one in Chicago. So let's do this. Let's make some comparisons here. By the way, do I think Justin Fields is a great player? No, but put him on a better team. I'd like to see what he can do. Jalen Hurts in Chicago would beat Justin Fields. Okay, here. O-line, four pro bowlers to zero for Fields. Running back. Justin Fields was the running back. He had 657 yards on 124 carries in Chicago. Hertz had DeAndre Swift, 1,049. Tight end, Goddard, 59 catches, 592. Fields, Cole, 73 catches, 719, and six touchdowns. Not awful. As a matter of fact, 
Cole Komet played outplayed Dallas Goddard last year. That's a waste of fifteen million dollars. Holy shit! About time to move off that guy next too. Wide receiver, pretty compatible here. Check it out. Justin Fields is such a shitty passer. DJ Moore had ninety six catches for thirteen sixty four and eight touchdowns. AJ Brown one hundred six for fourteen fifty six. Holy cow, he made the Pro Bowl. Wait a minute. If Fields only had 2,562 yards and 16 touchdowns and nine picks, that DJ Moore got his numbers like AJ gets his. Interesting. Devontae Smith, 81 catches, 1,066. Some dude named Darnell Morey. 31 catches for 414. What's the guy's name? Darnell Munnery? Mori? Muri? So Fields doesn't have a running back and he doesn't have a number two. But Hertz has all this and one of the top offensive lines in the National Football League, now Saquon Barkley. And you're going to sit there and tell me that Justin Fields has an opportunity and an opportunity in Chicago to fucking succeed when he had nobody and he's the running back. And you're going to sit there and go, well, he sucks. Hey, he did suck in Chicago. But I think anybody would suck. Patrick Mahomes might be the only guy that wouldn't suck in Chicago. Oh, his name is Mooney? Okay, sure. The point, again, I'm not making a case here that Justin Fields is better than Hurts. I'm making a case. Don't sit around telling me that Jalen Hurts is this superstar player when Jalen Hurts is a superstar player, and it does matter. Because Justin Fields never got a legitimate opportunity with legitimate talent around him and a legitimate play caller around him. They just fired the entire offensive staff. And he got a defensive-minded head coach who's going to be canned at the end of the year. Do, do I think Justin Fields in the time of his career right now is better than Hurts? No. But I don't sit here and think that Hurts is some sort of superstar player. Could carry a football team to save his life. Or wait, he could carry a football team like Brock Purdy can. Brock Purdy and Hurts are the same dude. It's just different. He's just different. Try to t sit here and tell me. Well, he's going to be. How do you know that? He's had three different years. The one thing that he has been, as Barb would like to say, has been non-consistent. Every year has been different. First, second, third. Actually, polar opposites. I mean, sometimes guys give you consistency. You know one thing about Kirk Cousins? He gives you consistency in who he is. At least you know there's a reason that guy makes that kind of money. You know why? He's who he is. And as Jerry Jones says, he keeps you around the rim. Again, do I like Kirk Cousins? No, but he's at least consistent. Steve goes like this. Not consistent because they keep changing the O.C., no shit, they can't keep anything sustainable because of the way they're operated. They don't believe that the coaches are that important. That's why they change them out, success or non-success. It really doesn't matter. Okay? Your Hurts is a young player still. Des, completely true. Completely true. But I don't believe there's a giant. How many people believe that there's just some sort of massive ceiling for him where he's going to be a 4,500 yard passer, like when McNabb was never anything like that? Then all of a sudden, after three years of completely different football, you think this guy's a 4,500 yard passer and a 35 touchdown guy? Not happening. Not happening. I showed you a guy on the Bears, and the Bears blew. Not, almost had 100 catches and 1,400 yards, the same as A.J. And that guy threw for 2,500 yards. Doesn't really matter, dog. It's the team around you. 
when you're a quarterback, unless you're Mahomes. That's the big deal here about Patrick Mahomes. You know why it's hard to catch him? Because the league can't spend enough money to catch him. And every time they do, they get banged against the cap. And guess what happens? You had to start releasing players. Bro, Purdy has, has had the same play calling for the last three years. Jalen has had to learn from someone new each year. Stop blaming him. So wait a minute. He can't overcome shitty coaching too. Why are you paying him 50 million bucks? Are you crazy? Don't run the play. Audible out of it. Hey, no. Be a leader. So you would let someone drive your career into the toilet, right? Is that what you're saying? Jalen, according to Prince, Jalen Hurts is cognizant of the offensive play callers driving his season into a turnover machine year, and he's good with it. Is that your contention? You understand what Prince is saying? Hey, the coaches are calling it. The, well, well, here, Slagger, I'll ask you guys. If you knew that your boss was telling you to run into a burning flame, would you because he told you to? Would you run your career into a fire? Do you? Would you run your career into a fire because a guy told you bad, uh, bad ideas and gave you bad direction? You would. What an idiot. Who in their right mind is me and being paid? Okay, so Jalen's cognizant of the ineptitude and he's going along with it? That's not leadership. That's a follower. You're exposing your guy the more you people open your face. You know what? I heard Patrick Mahomes, when Andy Reid says, is that that guy will change place consistently out there. You know what that comes from? Not trusting your quarterback, and the coach is not trusting the quarterback. You got to be cool with implementing and adjusting in-game adjustments. So that's right. I told you this a year ago. One thing is for sure, they put this game plan together on a Saturday night and they go, they run it on a Sunday instead of going with what's out there on a Sunday. And the new scheme put on you and what happened, Sills? Did it make you better as a player? That's my mistake, Prince. Prince, that was my mistake. That Thank you, Prince. He's dead on. When I got put in a 34, I ran my career into a fire. Thank you, Prince. Yes. That's where I'm coming from. You're right, Prince. You know, Prince, thank you for doing that. Because I've told you guys, and I have to humble myself to that. Yes. They drafted me 56. They gave me the money. Did I fight it? No. I played it, and I was done. True. So, wait, wait a minute. Wait, let, me get, let me get back to Justin Fields. You know why Justin Fields went to – why do you think Justin Fields went to Pittsburgh instead of truly – why do you think he went to Pittsburgh instead of Philly? Why do you, why do you think he went there? This guy had nobody in Chicago. Now they just trade for Keenan Allen, I think. Q says Tomlin. Probably some truth to that. Tomlin versus Sirianni? Think of that. I know Big Bill thinks that um, Nick Sirianni... Um, he, he he thinks he's Vince Lombardi, but you don't go and play for a lame duck coach if you're Justin Fields. You go to Mike Tomlin. 
I'm not trying to criticize you excessively. I'm simply emphasizing the importance of coaching. And, and, and Prince, more so where you go. See, Prince, the fundamental problem in Philly, can I tell you what the fundamental problem in Philly is? The head coach is not the play caller. Regardless what Big Sill says, Jalen is 100% on the hot seat. Every posi- every offensive position is Pro Bowl level. No excuses this year. Thank you, Big Fish. Uh, dude, that's – what. listen, what I'm saying to you about fields, you know, Bill asked me something earlier, and he goes like this. You think fields is good? No. I don't. <laughs> Seriani blows it. That's uh, put on the uh, Tony Montana uh, Goodyear blimp. Oh, the world is mine. Sirianni blows from jail from uh, Xander. <laughs> I, like I said, when I'm talking, no, I don't. But he never had a shot to succeed because just like Prince said, Prince, you got put into a situation like I did in Tampa, and you can't succeed. It's impossible with bad coaching and bad players around you. It's impossible. Okay? Sills, what if Eagles traded for Pickett if Hurts fails, falls on his face? They probably did. Some of you are going to go like this. Well, Pickett's not good. If Jalen Hurts has 18 turnovers again, he'll be benched. And it's over. Do you understand That if Jalen Hurts has a high turnover season again, he's fired. They're not going to bring him back. And they set the contract up for that. This is simple, dude. Hurts bounces back. I sure hope he's right. I don't want to cover a shitty team. One minute he's riding the Hertz train. What minute was that? What minute could that have possibly been? That he that he showed really a great stretch? Dude, I saw Mark Sanchez and Brock Purdy show me a great stretch of wins. So? Dude, honest to God, Jalen Hurts is Brock Purdy. He's not better. He doesn't do one thing better except run. Not one thing better. Not one thing better as a passer. Nothing. Zero. Zero. And yeah, he's a better runner. So is Justin Fields a better runner. Okay? I don't like Brock Purdy. I think he's okay. Brock Purdy could eventually become the future Kirk Cousins. This is not about Sitting here, you you you. What 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 has happened here? When it comes to you're forget it. You know what's crazy? People really are trying to give Jalen Hurts more flowers for the talent around him when anybody could come in here and they would be better at the position and throwing the ball than him. He is awful at throwing it across the middle of the field. He's awful at screen passes. He's awful at blitz pickup. I don't know what else to say. Oh, that's coaches. Okay. So Jason Kelsey, Landon Dickerson, Lane Johnson, and Jordan Malata, and Cam Jurgens. they suck, and the play calling sucked on all of those guys, and everybody is part of going along with a suck-ass plan. Congratulations. You all failed miserably, including the quarterback. I mean, 
you want to you want to put you put the blame on two people when this is an organizational decision that caused this meltdown and all of a sudden you're going to go because Kellen Moore and somehow you guys have tied in that Kellen Moore is Ernie Zampezi or he's some sort of North Turner um Kyle Shanahan type play caller or Sean McVay and he's not that's in insane to think that He's had no playoff success. Zero playoff success. Kellen Moore has been awful in the playoffs. Oh, that's, but wait, that's Dak. Right? And in Philly, he'll be better with Hurts because Hurts is better than Dak. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen that. Sills, he got to a Super Bowl. So did Brock Purdy and Jimmy Garoppolo. Remember when Chris Sims said Minshew could make the playoffs with that at the Eagles team? He was right. Colts almost made the playoffs with a worse roster. He could have. Justin Fields could make. Hey, how many people believe that Justin Fields with his running ability and his marginal passing ability Eagles would still make the playoffs in the NFC. I believe they would. I don't know if they'd win 12, 13 games. Oh, that's right. You won 11 with that talent. Oh, I forgot. Okay. Last season, he was comparing, never compared him. No. Once again, Eagles a dickhead and doesn't get it right. Steve Young and Joe Montana, their first seasons, as starters in San Francisco, do not compare to how Purdy has started his career. It's not a comparison when it comes to ability. It comes to the team success that he's having with the team compared to those two. Try listening. Stop lying. Because you know what you do? You, 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 you sound like bloodbath hoax. Okay? That's a lie. That's a lie. Okay, it's a lie. So when you do this, okay, when you do this, once again, I'm not sitting here telling you Justin Fields is some sort of superstar. But I'm telling you this, I'd like to see what he could do. And he went to Pittsburgh, why? The head coach. And they don't give up on talent in Pittsburgh. And I think they like them. Whereas the Eagles are going to play Hurts no matter what, even if he stinks. They're not going to play Russell Wilson. Because Wilson has, they, Wilson has to show the Steelers that he can get another contract and get another big deal and sign a deal in Pittsburgh, and that the Steelers want to keep him. Worst offense in the league? They were eighth, the Eagles. You had three pro bowlers in offensive positions. Running back, quarterback, and wide receiver. You were eighth. I mean, what are you talking about here? It doesn't, you know, hey, you know, because he has all the guys around him. That doesn't really matter. Really, when you have more talented people at anything you do in your life around you, compared to when you, you, you're with people who stink. Cowboys had number one offense. He leaves. And they still have the number one offense. Yet Eagle fans give Dak none of the credit. Was it Dak or Kellen? It was Dak. Oh, that, okay. Um, Dad says that he wasn't second in turnovers. Okay, he had 18. Whatever 18 is next to Allen's 20. He had 18 turnovers. You can rank them all you want. Okay. 
Kellen Moore helped in the development of Dak. Probably. Okay. But to what end? How can you not see Kellen Moore help? How can you not see Kellen Moore helped in the development of Dak Prescott? I didn't say he didn't. I'm saying that he was better when he left. He had a career year. Am I wrong? He had a career year. Dude, this can't be that hard here. Now let's do this. Good. Right on time. Let me ask you something here. Where's that list? Perfect. So according to you guys, the Eagles, um, Justin Fields didn't want to play in uh, Philadelphia because he felt he had a better chance at starting in Pittsburgh. Let's just say that's true. And you guys, in your fantasy football ways, believe that. And so they decided to trade for Kenny Pickett, okay? Let's just go along with your fantasies. That they went, you know, I I evaluated and I scouted, and I'm talking Howie, Kenny Pickett personally when I dr- flew up or drove up to the UNC Pittsburgh game. Remember that? All right. Since 2000, let me ask you this. Since 2000, with Howie Roseman and Joe Banner and the analytics and the quarterback guru known as Jeffrey Lurie and all the wisdom that they have at the Novacare Center, how good do you think the Eagles are at actually evaluating the quarterback position, period? What grade would you give them since 2000 on evaluating the quarterback position? What would be that grade that you would go, wow, you know? Like, Belichick at least has drafted starters and the GOAT. Okay? So when they say they signed Pickett instead of Fields, did they make the right choice? So Jason says C plus, C minus, B. John Kitna was responsible for Dak's growth. Look at Kyle. He thinks 25 years of drafting quarterbacks is incomplete. When you've given two deals out of almost $500 million, he thinks that's incomplete. Sills, why are you not blaming the coaches in any of this? I am blaming the coaches. I'm blaming the organization for the way they do operations. Since 2000, give them a C plus or B minus. Look at that. Not good. C minus, maybe B minus. All right, let's take a look at that. I wrote them all down. And let's do this. They added Michael Vick. So, you know, they took a gamble on Michael Vick. When, you know, Vic was coming out of prison. That's a big deal. That's a big deal to me. Okay? Let's do this. Let's see how some of you guys say B minus. Okay. 2001, A.J. Friedley was a fifth rounder in 2001 out of Oregon. A.J. Friedley. Um, was a journeyman, dude. Bounced around the league. I mean, he's like Tommy DeVito. Not a little better than Tommy DeVito. Let me make a comparison. Chase Daniels? Nah, he's better than Chase Daniels. A.J. Freely? I don't know. Josh Dobbs? Okay, something like that. Josh Dobbs? Andy Hall, who's that? He was a sixth rounder out of Delaware. Who's Andy Hall? Okay. Who who's who's Andy Hall? 
Kevin Cobb. This guy stunk. And he was a second rounder like Hertz in 07. He stunk. Okay? I don't give a shit what you got for A.J. Freely. A.J. Freely's career was nobody. He was a nobody. I'm asking you the player, not what you got for him. He was a nobody quarterback for you. He was a nobody. Kevin Cobb, second rounder. I mean, how did he how did he play for you at quarterback? I'm not asking you what you why are you changing the goalpost? I asked you how he played for the Eagles, Kevin Cobb. How good was he? Good or bad? How good was he? He wasn't very good. Was he good in Philly, Kevin Cobb? Mike Kafka, fourth round pick, 2010. I'm proving a point. You can't draft quarterbacks. These are, these are, these, t- these people brought no playing value to your team. No playing value so far. Howie's in the room. A lot of the same people are still in the analytics department. Let's keep moving on. Nick Foles, Arizona, third round pick. What do you make of that pick? Maybe had the most inconsistent, maybe had the most inconsistent time in Philadelphia Eagle quarterbacking history. Had the highest of highs in the franchise's history and had some of the lowest lows of franchise history. He couldn't keep a job. And the Eagles didn't think enough of him um, to keep him, even after he won the Super Bowl. So right there in a nutshell, the organization, I think they should have kept him. And here's, here's what I say. So the Eagles have drafted all these guys, and the one critical decision that they had to make in keeping a guy who could have got the Eagles to two NFC title games if Jeffries doesn't drop that pass in New Orleans. And they decide to go with Wentz. Right there, do you think the Philadelphia Eagles are good quarterback talent evaluators? Yes or no? You realize about 80% of all quarterbacks drafted don't amount to anything league-wide. Okay, fair enough. So far, I really haven't landed on anybody that's been of significance, except for Foles' win and the colossal mistake that Howie and the organization made and the owner on moving off of Foles. Right there in a nutshell, do they evaluate quarterbacks and do they make the right decisions about their quarterbacks? Yes or no? So when you talk to me about Justin Fields versus Kenny Pickett, How do you know they're doing the right thing? They haven't displayed it yet. Go with human nature. Not with what you think they'll do next year. Do what the organization has done for 25 years. Look at their behavior. Their mannerisms. How they act. And as my good friend Bill would say, look how criminal or a person has a profile of what he does on a day-to-day basis. This is not a one of. A.J. Freely has brought nothing to your franchise. Andy Hall, who? Kevin Cobb stunk. Mike Kafka, whatever. Foles, you made a bad decision there. Matt Barkley, fourth-round pick, Southern Cal. Who? Oh, yeah, I remember him, kind of. Carson Wentz, first-round pick. 
that thing couldn't have been handled any worse by the player and by the organization. It couldn't have been handled any worse. Both people were responsible. Wentz probably more. But it was a collide. The coaches were at odds with the GM. There was discord in the locker room. Well, I mean, okay, over a quarterback. Over a quarterback. And by the way, wasn't an awful five, six years, whatever it was. You won a Super Bowl. He helped you win home field. I mean, he has a single season passing records for yards and TDs. Okay, for a short period of time, he was accomplished. He delivered something and helped deliver something no other quarterback in Eagle history had ever done. Okay, and again, and it started great, ended horrific. That's the epithet on that guy's stone in Philadelphia. Plain and simple. Again, I'm telling you on March 18th who he is. Okay, again, this topic goes into the Eagles believe they know what they're doing at quarterback, and they don't. They have not displayed it in any way possible. That's why when you say to me, Jalen Hurts is going to be, how do you know that? You haven't had, you've had limited success at best in your 25-year history since the dudes owned the team since 2000. Am I wrong? Here, let's go to another one. Clanton Thurston Howell III out of Northwestern. Thornson, fifth-round pick. Who? And here you got the boy wonder, Jalen Hurts, 2020. Three different years. Then now you got Tanner McKee, sixth round. Look at these names. A.J. Freely, Andy Hall, Kevin Cobb, Mike Kafka, Nick Foles, Matt Barkley, Car uh, Carson Wentz, Clanton Thornson, Jalen Hurts, and Tanner McGee. These are all the quarterbacks that you guys have drafted since 2000. And you're trying to tell me they make proper decisions at the position and they know what they're doing. Name me one position that you think they've done the right thing at for long term since 2000. Name me one. Don't say Hurts. You don't know that yet. Coming off that year, you don't know that yet. You flip-flopped on Wentz. I'll show you how bad you flip-flop on this kid, too, if your guy comes out and throws another 18 turnover year with that talent. So, you you know, it was, it was classic listening to everyone talking about, well, Justin Fields sucks, you know. Justin Fields has nothing around him in Chicago, and that does matter. That does – even a limited dude with limited talent is going to win with that talent. Even a guy like Minshew. Sitting there telling me. So, if you're going to tell me, well, hey, you know, he made those players around the better, then so did Brock Purdy. So, Purdy made all those players like Christian McCaffrey better too then, right? You can't have it both ways. Is that right? Same thing with Pickett. He had no one around him. Little better old line, but here's the thing, Steve. Better coaching was in Pittsburgh. I'm not one thing I want to make it very clear here. I'm not telling you that Kenny Pickett or Justin Fields are superstar players. That's not anything remotely close to what I'm saying. But the environment and where you're drafted and where you go and who's coaching you is an enormous influence on what you – look at Chicago. You want to know, I guarantee you, if you put the quarterbacks that they have drafted since 2000 on a piece of paper, you'd probably need a vomit bag. Honestly, you probably would need a vomit bag. I'm not saying that the Eagles are like in a, in a, in a – on an island by themselves when it comes to evaluating that position. 
The quarterback position is very difficult. But don't sit here and tell me, you know, they got the right guy for the organization and Kenny Pickett. How do you know that? Their history doesn't prove that out, that they know what they're doing at the quarterback spot. Okay, listen, Kyle's missing the point. Three Super Bowl trips in that time. You really think that they've evaluated the quarterback position enough to sit here on a Monday, on March 18th, to tell you that they did the right thing with Kenny Pickett instead of getting Justin Fields in the building when they can't pick a quarterback or make a decision to save their life. And they pollute their own environment with Carson Wentz. And right now, last year, would we not agree? They Hey, most of you just got through telling me, did they not hurt Jalen Hurts' development last year, the Eagles? Here, let's do this. Do we all agree? Management and coaching, Steve, would you try? Would you say this at least with me? That management of the Eagles and the coaches of the Eagles hurt Jalen Hurts' development as a starting quarterback. How many people in here would at least agree with me on that? Okay. Other than Kansas City and the Patriots, LJ? At least that guy drafts starters and people who have won division titles and taken other teams to Super Bowls. Okay? Okay, look at everyone. Absolutely agreed. So, Wentz is better talent than Hurts. He's a better passer. Hurts is a better leader. Absolutely. All I'm telling you is, okay, so you guys agree. Management screwed up, Sam, screwed up Jalen Hurts last year. That's been my point here. That's the point. That, that This is the point. With this offense, I truly believe most quarterbacks will thrive. Too much talent. It, Kirk Cousins would throw for 6,000 yards in this offense. Because he's a superior passer than Jalen. Thanks, Steve. Okay? Too many cooks in the quarterback. Okay. Steve, you're validating my point. How do you know they know what they're doing in development of these quarterbacks? When they're constantly rolling out OCs, changing the environment as... What's the guy's name, Jeff Kurt, that goes on with Birds 365? They don't build sustainable football teams, and they're not very good at quarterback decisions. And you sitting there telling me you think Jalen Hurts is going to have a turnaround year when they haven't displayed any quarterback that they've ever drafted having turnaround years. How do you make that, how do you make that proclamation? Why? Because you wish it? I hear people on my network, Jalen's going to have a turnaround here. Where in the history in the last 25 years have you seen the organization turn a player around at that position by making proper moves, whether it's coordinator, talent, what have you? So when you talk about building an offense or a guy moving forward, how do you put that together when they haven't displayed that at any time in their entire 25 years? Where do you see that? And it's the same owner and the same mentality. Remember something. Joe Banner came out of a personnel decision. And how he came out of putting contracts together. So when people go, "How get this, you want to hear the." This is even more insane. You're giving Howie Roseman credit for doing his job because that's his job. He's a capologist and came from financing. He didn't come from personnel decisions. So congratulations on doing your job well. Okay. 
So you're you're really good at cutting deals. You're not very good at drafting defensive players at all. You've made lateral, you have not really helped the defense yet. The restructuring of the sweat deal and the Gardner Johnson deal, those are solid moves. The sweat deal's really good, keeping them in the building. The Gardner Johnson deal is kind of a risk. Remember something. Here's the problem that you get with Gardner Johnson. If Gardner Johnson doesn't get you six picks this year and he has one, he's not worth the money. Remember I said that. If Gardner Johnson doesn't have six turnovers and he doesn't have that, he, he that's not a good deal. Okay, out of position numerous times. Gets turned around in pass coverage. He's a playmaker. Okay? Bill said the Eagles are the best team. Okay, sure. That defense is the worst defense in the NFC for any playoff contending team. They made a lateral move with Bryce Huff. Huff, Reddick's not going to be here. You have addressed, and the linebacking position, who'd they sign over the weekend? What was the kid's name? What was that dude's name they signed? The guy from the Niners. Orenthal James, what was it? What was the kid they signed? Um, Oren Burks, not bad, but once again, he's a backup. He's special teams. And as you say, he's depth to Zach Cunningham and N'Kobe Dean. That's who he is. He's, he's depth. Yeah, they signed O.J. Burks, Orenthal Burks, and he's depth to Zach Cunningham and to the Kobe Dean, two stiffs. Steven, thank you for reminding me on the Super Chats. Chicago Bears haven't been able to develop a quarterback since Sid Luckman. I bet Justin Field looks a lot better as a Steeler because the Steelers are a real franchise. Absolutely they are. Well coached, putting things together, believing in players. Steven from Florida reminds me. Uh, we will always read the super chats because, and we got back on that last uh, last week. Hey, however, when I do have guests, please don't send them, okay? Because I can't get to them. This week we have, um, or today we have Gary Cobb at 4.30 and Merrill Reese will be with us at 5.30. So Jalen's supposed to carry the worst defense? Dude, he had three, and he couldn't put more than nine points up against the Bucks. What about his 18 turnovers? What'd that have to do with playing center field with the uh, defense? How about being almost last when it came to blitz pickup? How about having an eight quarterback rating over the middle of the field? What's that got to do with defense? I mean, did the did the did the Eagles score? In, 10 points against the Bucs in that playoff game. The Bucs previously, against Carolina the previous week, beat them 9-6. And then they dropped a 30-burger on you. I mean, <laughs> the Bucs. The Bucs in their, like, uh, turnstile O-line destroyed you. <laughs> How funny. Hey, Justin Fields. You know, hey, 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 get this. Shit, AJ, AJ um, Owens would absolutely love Justin Fields as a quarterback. He got DJ Moore's numbers. Oh, he'd love him. Just throw it over to AJ. And AJ go home with his numbers or go up to Atlantic City when the team's down in Tampa playing and he's up there drinking Mai Tais. It's my team. Look at it. <laughs> Quite a teammate. Got to love it. 
Guy's drinking Mai Tais at a bar in Atlantic City, and his team's fighting for the playoff spot and fighting in the playoffs, and his team gets rolled, and he's drinking Mai Tais. <laughs> hey, man. And that's the captain. Don't forget it. That's the captain of the team. How you doing? Sales. <laughs> uh. Moving forward, stop looking in the past. I'm not. I'm looking at the Justin Fields, Kenny Pickett deal, because it, it it you know, it's it's funny how the media in Philly likes to change a story, like um, uh, MSDNC and like CNN, the Clinton News Network, those two places on how they try to change a story. Ah, uh, you know. Fields knew he couldn't start when he came to uh, Philadelphia. He just knew it. Because why? Your guy's some superstar player? He's not. Nobody would ever in a million years call Jalen Hurts a superstar. He's not. He's a really good player. Superstar? No, I don't think so. Is Brock Purdy a superstar? They're the same dude. They're the same guy. Woo! Come on now. Seals, do you think, here, I want to make it very clear. You're not saying Justin Fields is a good player. No. You're, you're, you're not suggesting that Kenny Pickett is going to beat out Jalen Hurts. No. Jalen Hurts, here's what's going to happen. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Kenny Pickett's not going to beat Jalen Hurts out if he has another shitty season. Jalen Hurts is going to lose his position because he's who he is. This is all on Hurts. It's not going to be on Pickett, whether he's good or not. Kenny Pickett will start this year. We'll all be contingent on how Hurts plays. Is that fair? Hey, by the way, if I were you, I wouldn't play Kenny Pickett in the preseason. I, I wouldn't, because if he starts looking good, woo! Pickett season. Who's more reliable quarterback, Jalen Hurts or Baker Mayfield? Um, Steven, let me see May May Mayfield do it again. Let you know. Let me see Mayfield do it again. And we're going to throw flowers at May. Hey, great year. Got a $100 million contract. But let me, let me, you know, let me see another year. Okay. Let me see another, let me see another year. Okay. Of course you would, Joe. Okay. You like communist. Let's see here. I cannot believe I'm going to quote the great middle schooler known as LJ, but Big Seals, you're a flip-flop. You said Purdy was better than Hurts multiple times. Now, they're the same player. I don't know if that's a bad thing. He had a better year, so he was a better player this last year, and I'm saying they're the same guy. You have a problem with that? What's wrong with that take? He had a better year. His team went to the Super Bowl. He had the least amount of attempts, and he was third in passing yards. He threw for a boatload of touchdowns. They won a boatload of games. They destroyed you. I'm like, are you suggesting that Jalen Hurts was great in that 49er game and that he didn't have a better year this year and that those guys are pretty compatible with what they've done so far and the players on their team? I'm, I'm, I'm not getting what you're saying. Hey, Rackstraw, cornerback from Missouri, looks like a pretty good player. He may be down there at 22 at the time. Okay? Okay? Yeah, he may be down there. Okay? 49ers are a joke? Well, they turned you into an ass beating. Okay? <laughs> 49ers are a joke after you get crushed by Brock Purdy and the fellas. <laughs> at your own barn. It's one thing to get beat up in your own front lawn. 
But the Eagles got beat up in their own front long by Brock Purdy and the and the fellas. <laughs> Did you not? Yeah, Brock Purdy came and saw the Eagles and Bill and the boys and all them guys got their ass kicked on the Eagles front lawn. Damn. Hey man, at least you get your ass kicked. Don't get don't get beat up on your own lawn or in your own driveway. That I mean, come on now. You know, you want to take it down to the beach or something. You don't want to get your ass kicked in your own lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, man, I'm a hater. No, I'm a realist. Calm yourselves, guys. Let's see how this thing plays out. I have my serious doubts of the boy wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Jalen's cape. Holy shit. Batman. That's what I'm going to say. Jalen, Batman hurts. You got it, man. The boy wonder. That's That's what they call him now. Absolutely. The boy wonder. Gotta love it, man. Can't wait for what's to play out this year with the boy wonder. Woo! One of the best offensive coaches on the planet, Kellen Moore. One of the greatest head coaches, you know, uh, percentage-wise of all time. Shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um Shit, are you kidding? Absolutely. This is what haters do. What's that? Point out facts? Hey, you know what? I tell you, man, I'm starting to love. You know, you, you know what? I, I, I got to be a little bit like Elon Musk. You know why? I don't go along with the plan. You see? I don't go along with the plan. That's all I have to say. I'm not part of the plan, you know, I don't, I, I'm not part of the plan. That's why when you come here, we just give you the facts. Absolutely. Brock Purdy season. <laughs> Brock Purdy hurts. Jalen Purdy. I don't know. They must be related. I mean, they look alike. 31 today. Seals blessed to have you. You're tough on us because you care. I do care. My Facebook wish is for White and Barkley to poop and all shit. <laughs> what are you doing, Earth? Give me a break. I mean, I'm supposed to read these, but, you know. So how far can the Eagles move up in the draft if the Eagles trade Reddick on draft night? Let's talk about Reddick next. Let's do that. Hit the like button. We'll hit on Reddick because I do think he's an important pre-draft piece. Okay? Gary Cobb, 430 from Fox 29 and the legendary Merrill Reese at 530 Eastern time will be with us. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.